Good afternoon and welcome to Webinar Wednesday. We're excited to have over 280 registered attendees for today's webinar, which is eligible for one credit from the ACI. Let's get started by giving one lucky attendee a Webinar Wednesday lunch bag for answering this trivia question. Today's sponsor, Nuvolo, is headquartered in New Jersey. This year sees the 40th anniversary of the movie Grease. Name the famous New Jersey native who played Danny Zuko in the movie. Answer now using the questions feature on your dashboard. While you're answering, I want to invite everyone to our full MD Expo conference, which will bring HTM professionals from across the nation to Seattle from October the 5th to the 7th for three days of learning, networking, and the latest advances in technology, products, and services. Register now using the promo code HTMROCKS. More details can be found at mdexposhow.com forward slash Seattle. Okay, and let's see who the winner of our webinar Wednesday lunch bag is. And it is Keely Matson. Congratulations, Keely. The correct answer is John Travolta. Webinar Wednesday would like to thank our sponsor, Nuvolo. Nuvolo is a modern cloud-based EAM platform that meets the highest standards for ease of use, performance, and online and offline mobility capability for managing clinical equipment for healthcare providers. Visit nuvolo.com for more info. Today is Peter Gold, Senior Solution Consultant at Nuvolo. Peter, you may begin whenever you are ready. Fantastic. Thank you so much. Hello, everyone. Uh, my name is Peter Goltz. Um, and today we'll be taking a look at, you know, some of the common trends that we're seeing in managing parts and inventory and take a look at how we can automate that, help you overcome some of those, those challenges. So here's a quick look at today's agenda. So first we'll take a look at some of those top challenges that we're seeing today in the marketplace. We'll start thinking about, you know, what really is that gap? You know, we know what those challenges are. You know what needs to be done, but what's what's really stopping you from getting to there? And then we'll hop into the solution and show you exactly how you can get a better grasp on your parts and inventory. And when we think about parts and inventory, there's a lot of different things, you know, that are going to be important. What parts are currently available? What parts align with which model or device? Which stock room is that part located in when, it's, when a part is added to a work order? knowing exactly the use quantity, knowing what that cost was associated with, with it so you can accurately go back to the department. So as I mentioned, you know, we'll take a look first at that current state. And within that current state, organizations are trying to keep a lean inventory. The models of many of these clinical devices out there are very quickly becoming um, very quickly turning over, uh, meaning that innovation is happening very, very quickly. So a model may all of a sudden be out of date within a year, two years, and any parts that you had associated with that then become dead inventory. So a lot of organizations are defaulting to on-demand orders for parts. So if technicians out in the field, they need a part, they go ahead and request it or pull it from the available stock room. Also, the, the process around parts ordering has become very efficient, inefficient due to these on-demand orders. Technicians are often out in the field, next to the device or in their workshop, and the process today of ordering parts has become very cumbersome. Because of the on-demand and requesting, it needs to go through many different steps. And that time spent waiting for a new part or new inventory really inflates that time to resolution. So when you're taking a look at, you know, things like, you know, time to resolution, time to close, that number is higher than it really would be. And also it gives an opportunity to greatly reduce it if you're able to very quickly get the technician, the part that they need, uh, so they can close out that work order and move on to that next that next issue. Now, as I mentioned, devices are becoming more and more complex. There's more components to it. There's more parts. There's different types of 
uh, processes that need to be followed. And as a result of that, and as a result of you know things like the Joint Commission, where you're tracking all of the processes that the work orders closed out, the service history, it then becomes a very heavy reliance on the documentation. So what part was used? When was it replaced last? When was the last work order on this device? And it's making it very, very challenging for many clinical engineering teams uh, to be able to manage all of these different um, areas that we've just discussed. What we're seeing as the gap is the clinical engineers, they know exactly what needs to be done. If they were responsible for managing just two devices, and if we think about a hypothetical scenario, they would know just off of their head the parts that need to go into it, the parts that were placed. They would know all of the service history. But the challenge has become, you know, and, and is that there's more than two devices. You know, there's thousands of devices within a hospital. And what becomes difficult is scaling that. And that's really where the tools become very important to be able to pass that, that human information, that human knowledge, and being able to automate that and scale it to an organization that has thousands and thousands of parts, equipment, devices. So the gap really is we have a very informed and technical skilled engineers that know everything that needs to be done. They wanna make very informed decisions, knowing and helping reduce mean time between failure um, tracking service history. However, the tools that are, you know, most of the tools that are out there today are outdated and unfit to make organizations being able to effectively uh, make that happen. We're seeing organizations using multiple applications to be able to add their parts, you know, using paper based work orders to then go out in the field, capture the information, the amount of parts used and having to take that information and going back to their computer and entering that in. Also using many different applications to managing the parts and procurement process. So there's a siloed sense of data when you're looking at the parts available and then knowing the cost associated with it, having to go into multiple different applications to reduplicate that information. And as I mentioned, technicians are always out in the field, so they're, processing through work orders, replacing parts, nurses are tapping on the shoulder to, you know, fix high critical issues. And because they're in different places at any time, it's very important to make sure that they have the ability to add parts, know where parts are available, and know where the nearest stock room is directly, you know, available to them right away. So the need is automation and more informed analytics and reporting. Because right now, there's many different types of data points that are out there. However, it's important to be able to gather that in a meaningful way where you can be tracking your parts and inventory accordingly. So let's go ahead and think about the solution. And to do that, I'll show you how you can better manage all of your inventory. See it on a dashboard, see all your reports, parts used, consumed, the costs associated with it what parts are being used and are available in the stock room today. We'll then take a look at managing the inventory because when you think about it, the, the inventory is really the core where you have all of the parts and equipment that are associated to that inventory and then managing the related parts, how many are available in each stock room and then taking a look at actually operationalizing this. So when a technician's out in the field, how do they go ahead to quickly add a part to a work order? Or how do they quickly add a part, you know, with a, a, their phone or tablet and processing through that work order, adding the parts and accurately reflecting exactly what was replaced? So at this point in time, let's go ahead and transition into the application and start off taking a look at some of the reports and dashboards that are gonna be really, really helpful for you as you get a better handle on those parts and inventory that you have. So, Let's start at the top, and, and here what we see is just a dashboard with multiple different types of reports tracking the things that are happening in real time in the organization. You know, what we see on the top here is a number of diff different single scores that you can be tracking in real time, things like inventory on hand. So knowing 
right away knowing what inventory is on hand, whether it's including parts or equipment, knowing things like used inventory, upcoming required inventory, and then also the costs associated with the consumption, either on a daily, weekly, monthly basis. When we think about these single scores, the data is great, but the real question is how are you accurately capturing this data? And what we're seeing a lot of organizations do is making sure that the information is captured at the point of a part being grabbed from the stockroom or being requested and tracking it all the way through being added to the equipment. Once it's on the equipment, tracking them when it's replaced and when it's disposed of. So really get an idea of that full life cycle. And I'll show you how you can do that very easily with, with something like a mobile application. What we see here is you know, tracking all of your parts usage by model. So knowing which models are consuming the most amount of parts, whether it's the amount of the volume of parts or the quantity of those parts. What we see here is the actual dollar amount. So you can very quickly identify which inventory or models are consuming the most amount in parts. When you think about repair versus replace, you know, the repair versus replace, once you decide that you want to replace it, what model do you want to replace it with? Is it the, part, the model that costs you a high cost of service ratio or the one that's, you know, been, been uh, performing very well within your organization? When we think about parts cost by manufacturer, you can see exactly your spend with each manufacturer. Another way that you can view this report is, you know, scaling your parts purchasing process and getting better discounts. So thinking about standardizing the parts purchasing process where, you know, maybe instead of having technicians or the procurement team going out to many different sources to gather the parts that are required, going to just a select few, funneling it through them and getting the, the discounts that you can from bulk purchases. Knowing exactly what stock that parts are available in the stock room can be really beneficial because when a part all of a sudden is needed, knowing exactly where it's located, the different parts that are located in that stock room. And the way that we're seeing that being accurately captured is you know, something like as simple as a barcode being on, that, uh, on the shelves. So when a technician walks up to it, he or she doesn't have to type in exactly what part it is. All they need to do is barcode scan it, enter in the quantity that they're taking, and add it to that workhorse to the cost. And um, the quantity are automatically subtracted from the stock room and added to that work order. What we also see here is the parts consumption by department. So starting to identify, turning it from a re proactive, from a reactive, identifying which departments are consuming the most amount in parts. You know, maybe it makes sense. Maybe it's imaging and you're, you're looking at the cost those parts are going to be more expensive than, than you know, something like the, the nursing unit. But let's say, for example, that you all of a sudden start identifying abnormalities in your data. You can very easily make changes based on that. Again, going back to the informed decisions, helping you scale, right? Because if there was only three devices in an organization, you would know very well and be able to identify those abnormalities. When you start to think about thousands of devices, thousands of parts, it becomes very, very difficult. Here what we can see is all of the different parts available in each stock room. So we can see, you know, which parts are available in that stock room. What's the current quantity? You can also search for this. So a common scenario that we see is a technician down the field, they need a part. Before they order it, let's see if we still have it in our stock room. And if it's available in a stock room, then we can transfer it to a different building, different floor, to make sure that it's available for him or her to be able to, to add it to the work order. You can see the available quantity. And what we'll take a look at in a moment is how you can manage accurately the replenish thresholds. So when all of a sudden an available part drops below a certain threshold, automatically purchasing that to make sure it's available. And then tracking in real time the events that are going on currently. So what you can see here is tracking something like, you know, today's purchase, purchases or parts replacements. 
so you can see in real time and start identifying what some of those trends are. What you can also do is set up thresholds or approval thresholds. So if a part is above a certain amount, let's say it's above 6,000, it needs to be approved by the manager, by the supervisor, before that actually is put into procurement. So that's a quick look at, you know, thinking about some of the reports that can be very, very helpful for you. But what's really important is making it easy to capture that information, make it easy to track that information. We'll take a look at that in just a moment. But also having a application in place that's easy to build these different reports. So within many organizations, you know, we see changes happening on a daily, weekly, quarterly basis. And what we see here are just a number of different reports. However, reports need to be easy to build. They need to be able to be shared across the organization. They need to be able to be added to a dashboard and also have you know, what we call single or uh, access-based view into the data. So you know, if I'm responsible for building A and Kyle's responsible for building B, I only want to see the data that's relevant to my organization. So you want to be able to have a tool that does exactly that, because if you see all of the data at once, it then becomes very unusable. Something that's also important when you're thinking about tools to be able to manage your parts and inventory and automate that, it's important to have reports that are drillable. And by drillable, right, if you see all of this data, all of these reports, if you weren't able to accurately drill into this and update that information, then these reports very quickly become unusable. If I want to see exactly the parts that are available in the stock room, I can simply go into that stock room and see exactly what's available. What's the available quantity, used quantity? What's that replenish threshold? I mentioned reports being very easy to build. You know, a lot of different tools that are out there, you'll, you'll need to, if you need a new report, you need to reach out to the vendor, say, um, you know, can you build this report? Maybe you hear back in a few weeks. You also need to pay for these reports. So thinking about, you know, making sure that reports are easy to build. So what we see here is we're just taking a look at parts or, stock, or a bar graph looking by stock room and what's available. We're counting the number that's available in that stock room. You can see that report here. I mentioned scheduling that report. So, you know, being effective is part of its communication. So being able to schedule this report to go to your supervisor, your manager, or your technicians so they know in real time what that actually is. So if I go to schedule this, this report, it'll be sent to them on a reoccurring basis. So when we think about reporting, dashboards, tracking information, it's important to have you know, a flexible tool that's in place. Let's go ahead and start looking at managing your inventory and also you know, thinking about the equipment, the devices that you have on hand, the parts that's been consumed, the cost of those parts. So what we're looking at right now is, you know, a very simple it's just a list of all of the equipment that we have within an organization if i were to go ahead and search for a specific device what i can see here is all of the parts that have been used and consumed by this device so i mentioned you know helping you scale as an organization thinking about the gap between the knowledge and the tools that are available what we have here and just to quickly walk you through this what we have here is a medical device. It's a you know, MRI device. We can see all of the information. We can see the costs associated with it. But in today's conversation, we want to focus on parts consumed and related parts. So what we're looking at is all of the parts that this device has consumed. You know, thinking about the gap between the tools and the knowledge. If there was two devices in the organization, you would know very well what parts have been added, what the cost has been. But this helps you scale, give you insight into that information. So here we can see all of the parts that were consumed, the work order that was associated with that, when it was created, the cost and the quantity. What you can also see is the related parts. So this is very, very useful because you know, thinking about automation, a technician's on the field, they need to add a part. They, they need to be as efficient as possible. And all of a sudden, when they go to add a part, 
seeing all of the related parts allows them to be very able to quickly identify which part it is, is it available, and then continue on with their day. So when we think about the parts, let's go in and, and start taking a look at what it looks like to manage parts, knowing what's available in each stock room. So what we're looking at right here is a specific stock room. And you can manage all of your different stock rooms in a number of different ways. To do that, let's go ahead and, and take a look at that. So here we'll be taking a look at our stock rooms. Here are all of the different stock rooms within an organization. When we go ahead to open up that stock room, we can see all of the parts that are available. Here we see the specific stock room, where it's exactly located, who's responsible for managing it. And when we think about true automation and helping you become more efficient, it's about having insight into that information. So here we can see all of the different parts. We can search for what's available. Uh, we can see you know, what the total cost, the quantity, and that threshold is. Within that part, I mentioned managing that replenishment, replenishment threshold. So what that truly means is that if this available quantity drops below the replenishment threshold, then it automatically creates a purchase requisition to replenish that part. A lot of the parts purchasing systems you see out there are things like, you know, part source, where you have an active um, subscription or you're using part source to manage all of your parts. Once that replenish threshold drops below, it can automatically push out to update that part, get it in the right stock room. You can also transfer this, so transfer it to another stock room as well. So we have the parts, we know the consumption, we know the available quantity, so helping you reduce costs in that sense. But what's going to be extremely important is making it easy for technicians to be able to process through those work orders, be able to add the parts directly on that work order. So what we're looking at here is a work order within the, you know, within our application. We see exactly what's available what the work order is, what work was done. But what we can also see is things like the itemized costs. So I can go ahead to add a new part. If I'm out in the field, I can add a new part, determine you know, the type of cost, which part I'm going to be adding. And as I go to add that part, I can see exactly the available quantity and where they're located. Also the manufacturer as well. I can determine exactly what part it, what uh, stock room I took this part from the use quantity. And what you'll notice here is also I can auto calculate the cost based on what it was purchased for. So, you know, perhaps as an organization, you have, you know, percentage discounts or whatever it may be, but this is a way that we can automatically um, calculate that cost. And what's nice is it's all interconnected. So you can see the work order, the cost, the vendor, and as I said, it can be an approval. So we think about sending out approvals for the procurement team to be able, or the management team to be able to say, you know, this is okay to add to this. Uh, it can be based on quantity um, or the task at hand. What we can also do, I mentioned, is very quickly go to order from part source. And what you'll notice is as soon as I go into that, it then prompts you to your login. And part source is just an example, right? So what's going to be important and what's something really important to think about here is, you know, we talked about the challenge of, of having multiple applications to manage parts inventory. And what we see here is the ability to just very easily in the same application be able to reference different data that's happening in the organization to help increase some of those efficiencies. So let's now go ahead and, and hop into the mobile application. And the data is great, but how are we actually collecting this information out in the field? So one of the challenges and one of the things that we just saw within the desktop version is that you're not always going to have the ability to have access to a computer. And what we allow you to do is to be able to be out in the field, add your 
add your uh, parts inventory and also any checklist to be able to process through that work order and then continue to uh, finish up that work. Give me a moment here just as I go ahead to pull up my device onto the screen. So what everyone should see right now is what we see is the tablet uh, located on uh, the screen here. And with that, we can begin processing through work uh, directly within that tablet. So once we open up the application, looks like we have just a, a little bit of a lag here. Let's give it a second to uh, show on the screen. There's always a workaround. Perfect. All right, we might have to come back to this one. Let's see, this will be our last shot. So um, it looks like we might have to come back to this one. But anyways, being able to process through your work orders, adding parts on a mobile is, is gonna be really important. So let's get back to you know thinking about how we can manage the parts and add them to your work orders uh, very quickly and easily. So going back to our work order here, let me quickly walk you through some of the different things as well um, you know, that you can manage. You can see exactly the equipment that's being added onto that work order. You can have a standardized process. And what this standardized process can do, and, and we're, what we're looking at right now is a specific work order. And within that specific work order, you can have the steps and procedures that need to be followed in order to complete this work order. It can be yes, no, pass, fail data entry fields. But what it can also do is remind a technician as they're on the field to be able to, you know, to add their parts. Did you enter in the quantity? Did you enter in the uh, cost associated with it? And as you can see, as we begin to process through this work order, we have all of those steps, whether it's yes, no, pass, fail, or data entry. You can also add your parts as well. So. We can go ahead and, and save this, begin processing through that work. I mentioned the ability to, to add the parts, but we can also see any parts that have been used. So as a technician, is, you know, as a worker is going back and forth between a team, they can see the parts that were already used. And all of this then rolls back up to the, um, you know, to the other technicians that are gonna be processing through this. And also rolls back up to the equipment. So when you look at the equipment, you can see the cost associated with it. You can see all of the, the quantities as well. You can also track installation guides. So installation guides or manuals are very crucial when you think about an organization with many different devices, having all of the steps and procedures, the parts that were required, the steps required to install a new part you can have that immediately accessible to a technician as they're processing through their work. 
You can also see any contracts. And car contracts come into play specifically uh, for any type of vendors that's responsible for managing parts. So if you have a vendor coming in or a warranty associated to a part, you can see exactly what's covered and what's not covered underneath that vendor contract. So let's go ahead and transition to mobile. So what we're looking at right now is a technician's dashboard. And within this technician's dashboard, um, we have all of our work orders, any type of preventative maintenance or corrective maintenance that we're working on, and also the equipment that we're responsible for. What we can also do is walk up to a device and barcode scan it. So I can barcode scan, you know, maybe it's 1D, 2D, 3, or QR code to process through that. If it's not the barcode scan, then we can very easily go ahead and reference it by, you know, the equipment, the type, or we can just simply search for the device that we're processing through. Once we go ahead and pull up that device, we can go ahead to, to complete that work order. And what you see here is all of the information that was provided when this work order was first submitted, uh, but we can also see any contracts. So as I was mentioning, when a vendor has any type of discount or parts warranty, the technician can see this directly out in the field, um, as opposed to having to go back to the workshop. We can also be tracking the time, thinking about other automated uh, costs. And we can track any work notes as well. But as we process through this, again, I mentioned the checklist. So not only can you remind technicians that the steps and the procedures that need to be followed at their workstation, but you can also remind them as they're processing through the work out in the field. And these may be, you know, tracking the parts that are required. Or they could also be other steps, like installation steps or specific steps required for a preventative maintenance. I mentioned the ability to add parts, but also you could be tracking labor, which can be automatically calculated based on the amount of time that it took to process through that work order. You can also be capturing things like device utilizations. So what we're seeing out in the field quite often is that organizations, as the devices get more and more complex, organizations are managing their parts replacements based on utilization. So maybe it's number of scans, number of uses. So using a schedule maintenance tool that allows you to get to that type of detail um, can help you reduce some of the costs and time associated with uh, managing your devices. Also, you know, the attachments. So when all of a sudden I go to add a new part or I find that something is no longer working, the ability to just simply take a picture and add that to the work order. So if there's ever a time that one of, you know, another technician processing on this work order, or perhaps my management team goes back to check on exactly what was done or what was completed to complete this work order, they can reference, you know, exactly what was done, the image that was associated with it. You can also have, you know, knowledge articles. So I show knowledge articles within the, uh, you know, within the application, but here when we're looking at mobile, we can have all the knowledge articles associated with our parts, uploading parts, managing our inventory. And then also, technicians are in the field. They need the ability to have this access both online and offline. So let's think about the scenario that a technician is in a place that has no internet connection. It has no Wi-Fi. It's important to have a tool that has the ability to be able to process through all of those work orders regardless of, you know, if they're in a basement or if they're in a place that has no internet connection. So, you know, with, with the mobile application we see here, technicians are able to do exactly that. So if I was offline, I could still process through this work order, add the parts, go into the stock room, add that quantity, um, you know, really being able to capture accurate information, which then gives you more realistic updates on the available parts, the quantity used, and also get a finer tune on that replenish threshold. And then also seeing service history. So not only um, completing this work order, but also knowing exactly what was done in previous work orders. 
So if this part was replaced, you know, just two weeks ago, two months ago, perhaps it's a faulty part. Perhaps that part is still under warranty. So being able to have an accurate, um, you know, accurate insight into exactly what's available, what's not available, and what has been done in the past. Getting back to you know some of the reporting, thinking about inventory and, and, and parts, something else that, that's crucial. We've talked a lot about managing available quantities, but also thinking about what that upcoming required quantity is. So up, upcoming required quantity takes into account the parts that are gonna be needed uh, for the upcoming work orders or scheduled maintenance that are out there. So within our schedule maintenance, we can assign the number of parts that are gonna be required in order to complete this work order. So what we're looking at here is, and just to quickly walk you through and give you an idea of what we're looking at here, is here we see a list of all of the, the preventative maintenances that are coming up that we have scheduled. When we go into our scheduled maintenance, uh, we can apply it to many different types of criteria, whether it's by um, you know, model, manufacturer, risk score, or if it's on some sort of AEM. But when we go into our specific, um, the specific preventative maintenance, we can also define the parts that are gonna be required. So again, giving you a better insight into what's needed and comparing against what's currently available. So you can purchase in advance bulk order uh, to help reduce some of those costs. And just to kind of, you know, back up here, um, I mentioned you can filter it based on any information. So you can say, you know, I want all of my MRIs located on this floor in this room. Also, I mentioned being able to trigger PMs based on utilization. So if you begin to identify that a certain part typically breaks, or maybe it's coming from the manufacturing, maybe it's based on your service in history, but a part breaks after 100 uses, you can schedule uh, these preventative maintenances around those that utilization data, whether it's being manually collected or if it's coming directly from the device. So there's really two main ways. If it's something that's smart, it's a smart device, it's network connected, being able to communicate back to the application or simply capturing it manually. If it's a large device, if it's an MRI, and the parts are quite expensive, you can manage it efficiently and effectively to be able to, first of all, maintain and extend the life of this device, but also being able to manage and know exactly how many parts are gonna be required to complete that. So I do wanna leave some time for questions. I know that we have some questions that have come in uh, throughout this the uh, webinar, so I think Let's take some time to, to answer any types of questions that came in. Um, and again, if you have any questions, as Linda mentioned, feel free to put them into the, the comment section and we'll, we'll answer those as we Okay, that's great, Peter. Thank you. Yes, we have got some questions here. The first one is, what applications are you moving customers from to Nuvolo? Yeah, so that's that's a great question, and you know, there's really many applications that are out there. You know, I mentioned one of the challenges is that there's a lot of point solutions that do you know just single things, and you have to go from application to application to application in order to complete the life cycle of you know something like completing a work order. We replace a lot of different applications. You know, clinical engineering teams using Metamizer. Um, Mainspring, TMS4 Rivers, um, you know, the list goes on and on and on. But as I mentioned, that's really one of the gaps is those solutions are outdated, where it's difficult to make changes, it's difficult to complete the work that you need to. Um, so those are just a, an example of a few of them. Okay, and another question is, do you integrate with ERP systems for parts ordering? Yes, yes, I'm, I'm actually happy uh, that question was asked. So there's there's really two parts of managing your parts in, in inventory, knowing what's on hand, work orders, and the parts that were used, but also 
being able to capture and pay invoices associated to that. So what we see oftentimes is integrating with an ERP system to be able to truly automate the entire life cycle from uh, parts ordered to payment um, and helping you know help you scale that your organization. Okay, actually, we've just had a question that came in that relates to that. Um, one of the attendees is asking us, asking you to show the process of parts ordering, receiving, invoicing, and restocking. How is the process handled within the application? Yeah, that, that's a great question. Um, we can certainly cover as, as much as we can. I'll take, you know, just a few minutes to, to cover that. Um, but also, you know, that's something we can always have follow-up conversations on as well. So let's go back to a work order. And I think we, we can really start the conversation from, from that place. Um, but as I bring that up, Linda, do you wanna, we can capture some more questions as I pull that up and then uh, we can cover that as well. Yeah, okay. Um, another question was, does Nuvolo support invoicing? And if so, how does that work with vendors? <laughs> so I guess invoicing is a very uh, popular topic. Yeah, so as I bring this up, um, invoicing is very common, right? Because going through procurement, managing the cost, the billing, and um, within the application, you can manage all of the different invoices and, and costs associated to that. So let's get back to, and here what we're looking at is, and let me get, get back to my screen here. What we're looking at is a work order. And I mentioned we'd start the conversation for managing invoicing, procurement, and purchase orders directly through here. So I mentioned, you know, integrations with something like a part source. So automatically purchasing them directly there. But here within these autom itemized costs, you have all the information that's associated to it. You can also manage your um, invoices directly from here as well. So either we can order through part source or we can initiate a purchase order. And the process is, is entirely up to you, but what we, we uh, recommend is having a process where it's flexible, right? So what we see here is a specific purchase order where you're capturing all that information. So what, when is it requested? When do we need it by? What exactly is the vendor that we're gonna go through? When is that PO date? And then being able to track it not only from the request side, but also the receiving side. So here we have all the shipping activity where we can track that information. So let me get back to that, let me delete it. So within that, we have all of our purchasing information. So delivery, when we need it by, you can also then manage the line items. So those line items are gonna include the parts that you specifically need. So maybe it's coming from a specific, the part that's already known, or maybe you're requesting a new part. Here you have the line items, which are gonna be detailed on what you need, what the price is gonna be. And if a technician's ordering it through their own sources, you know this is where they can capture that information. And also you can derive list price based on the inventory that you have on hand. Um, so once these are requested, you can then go ahead and, and add it to an invoice. And we see organizations managing their invoices in, in a lot of different ways. Um, but one of those is you know sticking to the common template where you have a, a printout which includes all of the, this information. Uh, so being able to very easily pass that back to the financial team. What you can see here is, you know, when we talk about integration with, with an ERP system, it helps close out this process um, where you have, you know, tr the true request for the part, managing from getting to the stock room, getting to the technician, and making sure that that invoice is paid. Okay, um, another question we have is how do parts and inventory tie back into work orders? Yeah, so very, very closely related. So every single part that's being added 
can tie back to that work order. So when it's added to the, the work order, you can be tracking the parts consumed, the parts used, and also the associated cost. Um, so it's really, you know, a very close relationship. And what that does is it helps you more accurately track the cost of maintaining this device. So for repair versus replace decision, you get a more accurate view of not only uh, the time spent, but also the costs associated with the parts of the replacement and also the warranties as well. So extremely closely, as you can see, um, but you know, there's a really a lot of value to that, knowing exactly what parts were used to complete this work order. Okay, I've got quite an interesting one here. How well does the mobile app work? Does it have the same full functionality as the desktop part, part version? Sorry. Yeah, no, that's that's a good question. So the mobile application is, you know, very technician focused. So within the mobile application, you can do everything you need to do um, within the mobile app that you see here. So add your parts. Uh, track the knowledge, the installation guides, the work order history, add attachments. You can also manage your equipment, and that's something that, we, that I, I did not cover, but you can also manage all of your assets as well. So I showed the work order piece, but also you can manage all of your equipment as well. So you can, you can install new devices and also retire devices as well. Um, so, you know, there's a number of different other use cases to use mobile and to be uh, process using mobile, uh, but that's just an example of a few of them. Okay, and another one. Can the Nuvolo system receive corrective service requests from the customers? Yeah, absolutely. So um, within the application, you can also, I, I very briefly talked about preventative maintenance. But there's really a lot of different ways that organizations are receiving are receiving corrective maintenance, and quite often that's coming from either an incoming call, which is a, a, the standard route. It's coming from an email, technicians being tapped on the shoulder, or it's coming through a self-service portal. So the most common scenario that we're seeing is you know pushing the team, nurses, staff members, to a self-service portal where they can not only track the status of the work orders that they've submitted and also receive notifications through email on those work orders, uh, but also being able to just push them to a place where they can self-serve themselves, they can receive updates as well. Um, or, you know, you're never gonna get rid of the, the, the shoulder tap to complete the work. So within the mobile application, you know, we it, becomes very easy for a technician to add a new work order um, so then that you can track the service history and the work that was performed in documenting that work. So, you know, I mentioned a lot of different ways um, our application can handle all of those scenarios, um, whether it's a call, whether it's a, um, whether it's a call, whether it's an email, or, you know, the other types of scenarios, the self-service portal, the uh, call center as well. Okay. Do you have an application to help my facilities team? Yes, yes. So, um, you know, what we spent a lot, we took a lot of time at today was we were within our, our clinical focused application. That's really where we got our start in the clinical space. Um, but what we, we identified early on as an organization is the clinical team is often working very closely with the facilities team. So, they need very separate functionality, separate applications to be able to do that, but still working within the same platform. And the distinction there is, you know, we see, um, you know, we're, we're looking at the application here, but within the same platform, you can access the facilities module. And within the facilities module, a facilities team can process through their work, manage their parts, um, very similar to what we saw before, but also di different because you want to make sure that those teams are operating in different uh, places so they're not um, stepping on each other's toes. Um, but the, the benefit is very easily passing work orders back and forth 
um, including the facilities team for an MRI install, making sure the statuses are being updated um, and everyone's on the same page. So um, the facilities module is very facilities focused. Um, and you know, we got our start because we, we identified that uh, there was really a need for the facilities team as well. Okay, um, what is the process to get off my current application and switch to this? Yeah, so um, you know, what we do first is you know, we get an understanding of exactly what you're hoping to accomplish. You know, what we saw today is a very high level, it's a, an overview of parts and inventory. Um, but the process is, is going to be, you know, making sure we get the information, the data, the processes that you need um, from your old application, your previous application, and also thinking about ways that you want to advance as an organization. You know, maybe it's thinking about new work processes, workflows. And when you think about through that legacy technologies, a lot of organizations had to adapt to the technology in place. It was really just a, a giant, uh, you know, furniture sitting in the room. You had to walk around it to be able to get from point A to B. But what Navolo has done, because it's so flexible, um, you know, you're able to ad adapt the application to exactly how you want your organization to run. So. You know, what you can see here is, you know, there's first the conversation of process, and then the second is, you know, making sure we get your data over from your old applications. You have things like inaccurate service history. Okay, and one last question. Can the mobile app work on all different types of mobile devices, like iPhones, Android devices, et cetera? Yeah, yeah, so uh, both, you know, whether it's, things like an iOS device. So what we saw today was an iPad, but you know, I have it on my phone here. Um, and then also and things like Android devices as well. So tablets, uh, the phone, um, it really kind of just depends on how it's being used for a clinical team. You know, technician can process through their work orders on their uh, smart device, or they could be on a tablet as well. Really whatever's gonna make sense or what's uh, preferred. Okay, that's great. Thanks so much. Um, if you have any further questions for Peter, he will be happy to answer them offline. Um, if you'd like to email him at peter.goltz, that's G-O-L-T-Z, at nuvolo.com, he will be happy to answer. Uh, thank you once again, Peter, for a great webinar, and thank you again to today's sponsors, Nuvolo. One lucky attendee will win an Amazon gift card for completing the post-webinar survey, details of which will appear on your screen shortly. You must complete the survey to obtain your certificate of attendance. For more information about our upcoming webinars, please visit our website, webinarwednesday.live. Thanks once again, and we hope to see you next week. Enjoy the rest of your day.